Hi guys, and welcome to the first video on my new YouTube channel. This is my new Sayat Leon for this year's TCR Championship. In today's video, we'll take a walk around and I'll show you what makes a TCR car. Last year was my first season competing in the TCR Championship after winning the Civic Cup back in 2020. In 2021, we were in a DSG Leon ran by Airy Motorsport where we managed to achieve second place in the Championship in only our first season. Towards the end of last season, the boys at Airy Motorsport and myself sat down and we decided to change from a DSG to a sequential for this year. The next step was to find a sequential car and we eventually found this one over in Czech Republic. All cars that compete in the different TCR Championships around the world are built to the same regulations. The Seat Leon TCR cars come straight from Seat Sport Factory so that they are built to the same regulations, making sure the competition is kept fair. This is where the BOP comes into play. The BOP means balance of performance, which is categorised into power, weight and ground clearance. Let's take a walk around the car and I'll explain the reasons why we chose the sequential over a DSG. As I mentioned earlier on, we found this car over in the Czech Republic. This is a 2017 car, but it was reshelled at the end of the 2020 season. The main difference between a DSG and a sequential car is that a sequential car is lighter, changes gear faster and also allows for engine braking. The negative though is that we're not allowed to use ABS on a sequential car, whereas last year in the DSG we were. For me as a driver there's not much to look at and there's no real difference in the cockpit other than the fact that we've got an extra pedal. British touring cars for example have a stick that they use to change gear, whereas for us we just have two paddles. That's the same in a DSG and a sequential car. Obviously, the difference now is that I've got to use a clutch to pull off, whereas a DSG has only got two pedals, a brake and a throttle, being an automatic car. Right, now let's go and take a look inside and I'll show you the controls that I use whilst out on track. Up here we've got the aim dash and this shows me everything I need to see whilst driving, including gear position, brake pressures and lap times. Down here in the centre console, we've got a power switch, an ignition switch, two brake bias valves, headlights, indicators and a handbrake. Now I'll show you controls on the wheel. Start at the top left, white is for the radio so that I can talk to the guys in the pits. Yellow, full course yellows. This limits the speed of the car in case we've got yellow flags around the circuit. Blue, this is for the fun. Black, this allows me to change displays on the dash. Gray, for park. Green, allows me to change preload settings on the diff. Red, this is to start the car, but also enable pit lane limiter. Grey for drink, blue for the rain light, white for the wipers, and finally yellow for the headlights. If you take a look in the passenger footbell, you can see the ABS pump. Just to the right hand side of that, you can see one of three air jacks. There's one in each corner at the front of the car, and there's also one just, just here behind the driver's seat. Just above the air jack in the back, you can see that we've got an aim camera inside the car. We must run cameras inside the cars for championship regulations, just in case you've been a naughty boy and you need to go and see the clock of the course after a race. Down here we've got the fire extinguisher system. Once this is plugged in and this is on, the system's armed. That means if we have an accident, we can hit this red button down here or the one outside the car and it will fill the engine bay and the car with foam. As you can see here, we've got an OMP Cupra seat. These come in all Seats from Seat Sport Factory. We've also got a six point Sparco harness. Last year in the DSG car, we got some cracking starts. All I had to do as a driver was hold the handbrake, feather the throttle, and as soon as the lights went out, we were gone. With Bradley Kent and Lewis Kent on the front row, Max Hart has a good start there from third on the grid though, but then box down as he, as Bruce Winfield comes from fourth to first. That was a demon start again from the Cupra, and Bruce Winfield has the lead through Paddock Hill Bend. This year, we've now got to slip a clutch, which means at the start of a race, it's much more difficult to pull off. If we take a look inside the back of the car, you'll be able to see where the fire extinguisher and the battery are mounted, and also the fuel cell. Moving from the inside to the outside, the most obvious thing is probably the addition of the big rear wing. This is mounted through the Perspex back window to the inside of the boot lid. Below that, we've got a wider carbon rear bumper, a 
got a big carbon diffuser. Moving on to the side, you can see how wide a TCR layon really is. By taking a look at the rear arches, the side skirts, the front wings, front bumper, and the big wide front splitter. All these parts are made out of carbon, so it becomes a little bit expensive if we come away with any crash damage. You may have already noticed the black mark on the front bumper. This is where I clipped a floppy marker at Donington Park a few weeks ago. That video is going to be uploaded to the channel next week. So if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.